What is going on around the world? 우리가 평화롭게 사는 세상 안과 밖에는 어떤 일들이 일어나고 있는지 여러분 아시나요? Well, that's why we have our lawyers here in the studio. Uh, 사건 파일의 시간인데요. We have our one and only 허순영 변호사님 다시 스튜디오에 오셨습니다. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. <laughs> We've been talking a lot about uh, the most disturbing cases sometimes, the most interesting, sometimes entertaining as well. So I wonder what topics we're going to uncover today. 오늘 들려주실 이야기는 또 어떤 건가요? 아, 오늘 들려드릴 얘기는 그 유명한 권경의 변호사가 그 어, 맡은 사건에 아하. 대한 이야기인데 네, 더 들어보시겠습니다. Yeah, it's really interesting. We uh, touched briefly upon this as well. It is quite, um, as you said, uh, popular. I don't want to say popular, but um, it's a famous, I guess, scandal of a, of a case. So we're talking about not only, you know, the, the, the criminal or, or the client, you know, the victim, but it's, it's actually the attorney that did something wrong here. And that could be quite um, an interesting case because I feel like the attorney needs an attorney as well. Um, but in any case, let's, let's take an auto the young it's okay to the voice job. Sasini Matanakio Pungo Pia Sakone, Suchare Pulchu Soke, Japanese or Pesuan Gongyonga Pionosaige, Chongzi Gilone Chingega Neresota. Tian Bionosaya Penan Shikuil Chilengden Chinge Vionu Shimikute, Gon Bionosae de Chongzi Gilan Chabunu Kelchangeta. Pionap Chigi Pakin Chinge Sayunan, Pionosa Popsa, Songshiri Mu Yibanida. Pionap Chigan, Songshiri Mu Yibane Jongdoa, Chuman San Rok Pandanetago Pakata. Gon Bionosan and Hakio Pungo Shidalida. 극단적 선택을 한 피해 자유족이 가해자와 교육청을 상대로 낸 민사소송 항소심에서 원고 측 소송 대리인을 맡았다. 하지만 재판에 3회 출석하지 않아 이 사건은 원고 패소로 판결이 났고 이 사실이 뒤늦게 알려지며 논란이 됐다. 민사소송법상 대리인 등 소송 당사자가 변론 기일에 출석하지 않거나 출석해도 변론을 하지 않을 경우 소를 취하한 것으로 간주한다. 지난해 1심은 가해 학생 중한 명에게 책임이 있다며 원고 일부 승소 판결을 내렸지만 이 씨는 이에 불복해 항소를 제기했다고 한다. 하지만 대리인인 권 변호사의 불출석으로 항소심에서 결과가 뒤집히며 원고 패소 판결이 확정됐다. I mean, this case is certainly interesting, but it's also interesting that they uh, shared her name. You know, we all often talk about how these criminals, these perpetrators, they need privacy and things like that. But for this attorney, it seemed like they didn't have any problem <laughs> with sharing who this person was. So let, let's take a look in English at what this uh, topic is. We're talking about attorney law and disciplinary action for attorneys. So one attorney by the name of Kwon kyung Ae has been disciplined with a one-year suspension due to multiple absences during her trial related to a school violence case she was handling. So this uh, resulted in a violation of duty of diligence uh, required by uh, attorney law. So attorney Kwan represented the plaintiff as legal counsel in an appellate uh, trial filed by the family of a victim who resorted to extreme measures due to school violence against the perpetrator and the education office. However, she failed to attend the trial on three occasions, resulting in a judgment in favor of the defendant. This fact came to light belatedly and caused controversy. According to the Civil Pro Procedure Act, if a representative or a party fails to attend the trial or fails to present arguments, it is considered as abandoning the lawsuit, so you kind of forfeit the case. So last year, the first instance court rendered a judgment that held one of the students responsible, resulting in partial victory for the plaintiff. However, Miss Lee, the victim's family member, launched an appeal against the decision. However, due to Attorney Kwan's absence as a representative, the outcome was reversed and the appellate trial 
and the judgment in favor of the defendant was confirmed. If we get to the details of this case, it's actually quite devastating. Um, and so you said uh, it was her daughter, or this one lady's daughter, mm -hmm. um, who went to school, was bullied, and mm -hmm. um, she eventually died? Yes, she killed herself. Okay, so she committed suicide. Mm -hmm. And so obviously this is, a, you know, a huge uh, phenomenon that we see here in Korea where, you know, school bullying, inside school, school bullying, or, you know, cyber bullying amongst the kids have gotten so severe. But it seems like, you know, in this particular case, it shows that even the lawyers may not be taking this, you know, so seriously. Um, so let's talk about what this means, right? The attorney being absent in the case she was handling. 변호사가 자신이 맡은 사건에 이제 불출석 그래서 이제 의뢰인이 패소했다고 하는데요. 그러면 변호사께 변호사에 대한 사건을 여쭤보는 게 조심스럽긴 하지만 <웃음> 화제가 되는 사건이니만큼 다뤄보도록 하겠습니다. So it could be quite a controversial uh, case, but we want to know first, as an attorney yourself, <웃음> 이제 먼저 보, 변호사로서 이 사건을 어떻게 보시는지 궁금한데요. Uh, okay, so um, I think that um, the fact that the victim took her own life after suffering from uh, school violence and the fact that the victim's mother can no longer appeal the case mm. because um, um, then 그 소가 취하했다고 간주되기 때문에 um, so she no longer has any right to stand in trial. Right, so, so that's the thing, right? So if, mm. you, if you, you have three chances, three mm. trials, um, and so this was the case, right? But the attorney did not appear for any of those three trials. So that means that case is officially closed. closed yes. yes, you can't reopen it or anything. Mm. It's just officially lost forever, yes. which is so devastating, devastating. If you were the mom's mo uh, the the daughter's mother, yes. The mom. So I think um, not only the fact that um, the attorney um, didn't appear in court. Mm. It's the fact. The consequences that make mm -hmm. this case more se um, serious, right. and um, so um, the victim's mother must have felt really um, devastated um, after learning about the um, the 1년의 징계 mm -hmm. 처분 disposition of one year um, suspension okay. of the attorney. And I read in um, in an article today this morning um, on 법률신문 um, that. 어, 매달 한번꼴 김경 권경에 나와도 변업 징계는 정직 1년. So it's it's like um it's not severe enough the penalty sure. or the sanction. So um 저도 약간 미국 변호사로서 그런 변호사가 어떤 케이스를 맡게 되거나 하면 그 클라이언트에게 가져야 될 그런 기본적인 의무들이 있는데 음. 그런 윤리나 이런 걸 항상 염두에 두고 있는데 어, 왜냐하면 그 사람의 인생이 거의 달린 문제라서 it's 그쵸. very serious. 그래서 그런 의무적인 거를 기본적인데도 불구하고 이걸 저버린 거에 대해서 어, 정직 1년 징계는 조금 가볍지 않나라고 음. 생각을 해서 음. 어, 이런 가벼운 처벌을 이렇게 처분으로 줌으로 인해서 그런 변호사가 법을 practice 할때 음. 어, 이런 걸 이제 안 지켜도 되지 않느냐라는 그런 좀 음. 이제 가벼우니까 음. 약간 좀 윤리 이런 거보다 약간 내 이익을 챙기자 이렇게 변할까 봐 조금 두려운 건 있는 거 같아요. Yeah, 같은데. I do think so because we yes. think about like a lot of um, let's say scandals that happen um, for celebrities for example, you know, and there's a scandal and 연예인분들도 약간 그런 문제가 있으면 복귀하기가 엄청 어렵잖아요. 네. 1년이 금방 가는데. <웃음> so for somebody who has a lot more responsibility, <웃음> 어, 변호사로서 더 책임이 많은 조금 더 네. 어깨가 무거워야 되는 네. you know you have a lot more weight on your shoulders mm -hmm. if you are having this role to represent them I mean that's the whole thing yes. 이 어, 어머니 같은 경우에는 음. 이제 변호사를 하이어를 해가지고 누구가 내 편이 됐으면 좋겠는 음. 그 직업이잖아요 네. that's what the lawyer's job is mm -hmm. and somebody who completely forfeited that role forfeited mm. that you know job it's just Definitely uncalled for, to say the least. Like a muchekim katten nukim. It's a bit irresponsible. Um, but I mean, I would want to know why. Maybe to give her the benefit of that, the doubt, she was so busy with other work. It's right, right. And um, I don't think it, it's an 
excuse. Ah, then, 그럼요. Then, um, even if you're representing someone, then you are like loaded with um burdened with a lot of work. Mm. Then you should um find a way to um ensure that that person gets a proper representation right. by another lawyer in the same law firm. Ah. Or you have to find an alternative. You can't just not go to work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 그래요. 저도 okay. 이제 방송을 하는데 어, 못 가겠어. 너무 몸 바쁘기 때문에 뭐 물론 프리랜서여서 다른 일도 할수 있지만 그럼 피디님께서 그냥 얘기도 안 하고 그냥 어, 무책임적으로 그냥 안 오면 뭐 어떻게 해요? Like, what are you going to do? That's yeah. just so irresponsible. So that is irresponsible. Yeah, as you said, you should find 대타를 네, 대, 대안을 찾고 Yeah, 네. 구해야 되는 네. 게 It's like the minimum you can do yes. Yeah, I mean, a, lo- a lot to say about this case So mm-hmm. again, you say that you're an attorney in the United States mm-hmm. 미국 변호사이시잖아요 네. 미국에도 이런 케이스가 네. 있나요? 존재하시나요? Um, actually, um, I have um, actually heard that um, it's quite common for ah. attorneys in the U.S. to oh. be disciplined oh, no. for missing a uh, filing deadline. Okay. You have to file a document by like 14 days after you file a complaint, for example. And um, sometimes attorneys do fail to appear in court, like Kwon Pyeongsa. Um, and missing a deadline can be adverse to the client's interest um, because as we talked earlier on um, the client may stand to lose a chance to file a motion or mm. have the claim abandoned completely and um the federal rules in the united states i'll touch upon it briefly okay. um um has a safe harbor so it it um provides a concept known as excusable neglect so um that's to uh, mitigate the harshness of being completely barred from filing the paper so um if an attorney Um, fail to file a document by a certain date because of, you know, um, inadvertence, for example, then the court um, gives an excuse. So it makes room for... Um, so there's like a grace period. Mm, grace period, okay. exactly. Yeah, But okay. in Korea, I'm not sure if, if there is anything like that. So uh, for, for these, mm-hmm. what you're mentioning now, we're talking about more paperwork. Mm-hmm, paperwork. Rather so, than mm-hmm. compared to like going to the case in trial. Mm-hmm, exactly. Okay. So the motions to file I see. in the beginning of right. the case. That's mm-hmm. like not doing your homework. Exactly. <laughs> okay. That's all I could like think of. It's like exactly. oh, if I'm going to school or if I'm going mm-hmm. to work, that's the only that's comparison exactly. I can have. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there is like a little bit of grace period, but mm-hmm. there are... Um, lots of cases, even in the U.S., where lawyers mm-hmm. um, file the complaints or file the paper, the documents, mm-hmm. quite late. Have there been issues where um, the attorney just neglects to show up on trial? Yes, there were, there were various instances oh, okay. where attorneys just failed to show up. And in those cases, do you know if they end up having like a one-year suspension? Most of them, they get punished quite severely. So, oh, I see. Um, So I don't think the um, the um, ABA, which is the American Association, um, the Bar Association, mm-hmm. I don't think they would um, give one year, um, um, what is it, suspension um, as a sanction. Okay. They would just give you like a complete disbarment. Right. I feel like your license <laughs> could be could like be taken away. Taken away completely. Ah, my dear. Or um, actually there's a server, like there's a website where people can just search for... Um, an attorney's name mm-hmm. and then um, the site gives you like if the attorney has been disciplined ah. so everyone like the public can access right you know if the attorney that you will be uh, that will be representing you has been disciplined okay. so there's a history of all the disciplinary yeah which makes sense mm. because you'd want to know what kind of lawyer that you've hired or mm-hmm. that you've that was, you know, assigned to you, you'd want to know their history as mm-hmm. well yes. for that mutual trust. Um, so it's more transparent. Sure, yeah. And, and you definitely want to know what kind of person is representing you in court as well. Mm-hmm. Um, that's right. Okay, so that's interesting. So in the U.S., 미국에도 이런 일도 있겠지만 조금 더 엄격한 그런 punishment가 있긴 있지만 for Korea, in this case, it's mm-hmm. only one year. So there mm-hmm. is, once again, the controversy of is the punishment too lax is it too loose Mm -hmm. yeah it seems to be um quite ongoing uh conversation here 
Um, but if we take a look at the um, lawyer's own like ethical code or moral code, mm-hmm. 그런 게 있나요? 따로 like before you mm-hmm. become a lawyer, they have like you know your own. I don't know. You have to say I will do this and I will do that. 그런 거. Like, yes. Um, 위반이라고 해야 되나요? 네네. Right, right. Um, in Korea, um, uh, in the U.S. first, um, I took an attorney's oath in front ah, of the judge. Ah. So I did it at um the 미국 대사관, 주한 미국 대사관 in ah. Korea because I was in Korea then. But every attorney has to swear in front of a judge or a notary oh. that you will do the best that you can. Mm-hmm. I see. Abide by the the rules of ethical conduct. Interesting. Mm. I think it's the same in Korea. Do the doctors, 의사분들도 이런 거를 하는 거군요. For, for, for doctors? For doctors, I'm not sure. Um, but lawyers, definitely. Ah. Mm. So, uh, PD님께서 Hippocrates 선서를 한다고 oh. 하는데요. For the doctors. doctors. Oh, really? Yeah, so mm. I guess, you know, people who have um, an incredible role mm. in society, mm. like to help people in physical health and mm. then to help people mm. when they're in, you know, legal trouble. Mm-hmm. You don't want to have, you know, people who are doing, going above and beyond. Yes. To help you. Okay, mm-hmm. so it's said to be a violation of the Attorneys Act. Mm-hmm. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what the Attorneys Act actually is. Mm. Okay, um, so um, in Korea, there's this Pyeonho Sabop. Mm-hmm. And I, I looked at what Pyeonho Sabop was. And okay. um, it's, it, it's, it covers not only the professional responsibility of lawyers, but it has all the fundamentals of being a lawyer. Mm-hmm. So, 어, 그럼 변호사의 자격이나 뭐 결격 사유 그리고 변호사가 등록될 때 아니면 개업을 할 때나 그리고 변호사의 의무나 권리 같은 거를 다 규정한 약간 fundamental legislation 같은 건데 그 안에에 그런 변호사나 검사 판사 등 그런 법조인에게 요구되는 직무상 윤리에 대한 내용을 다 가지고 있, 포함하고 있습니다. 그래서 봤더니 그런 어, 변호사법 24조에는 품위 유지 의무라는 게 있고 또 24조 이항에는 진실 의무 그리고 25조에는 회칙 준수 의무 회칙이 그, 그 대한 변호사 협회 회칙이라고 해서 약간 regulations 같은 oh, okay. 약간 그런 따로 있는 거고 그리고 네네. 그 비밀 유지 의무도 있고 그리고 과, 공익 활동 의무 그리고 oh. 이익 충돌 회피 의무 이게 like duty to um, avoid conflicts of interest sure. in the US makes sense. 그런 것들이 되게 유사하게 있더라고요. 음. 그래서 그런 것들이 있습니다. 근데 제가 최근에 그, 아, 그런 articles 많이 찾아보니까 그 최근에 그런 변호사법의 그런 의무들이나 아니면 회칙들을 위반하거나 그런 걸 위반해서 징계를 받은 변호사 수가 최근에 많이 늘어나고 있다고 합니다. 아, 왜 그러는 걸까요? 어, 조금 렉스해져서 그런 거 아닌가라는 아. 생각도 들고 This is what we say. Also, no, p e b r o s a k r o a t h a r o a i Yeah, I, which is a shame because yeah. I don't know. I mean, yeah. obviously, these lawyers should, you know, be on your side and k r o m r o s a k a n t n a n n k m i s a d e n d e k n y a n g m a r o s h i k n y a n g m o k t i a n n k m i n g o a k i d a a o You know, it just feels like they just left you. You know, and I'm so a, maybe they're too busy to take care of the ethical side of work. Could be, Or, yeah, and and I understand mm. that as well. Like you're just so busy, mm. you kind of forget. No, p a p u k e d e m y o n No, we eat it. No, m o n e y You're smiling at e m y o n You don't. 초반에 초기에 이런 조심을 잃고 조심을 잃는 거 있긴 있죠. Sometimes, yes. Sure, yes. you get just stuck mm. on. You know, particular case, 아니면 이제 회사이기도 하잖아요. 네. 이 법인 회사이기 때문에 그 음. 안에 있는 뭐 드라마나 네. you know, you can get just soaked up by all the mm-hmm. things that aren't so important mm-hmm. and forget what really is important. Yes. Um, but in any case, you know, and then let's talk about can you say no to a case that is given to you? Can you choose the cases? Yes, definitely. You can. Yes, you can. 그럼 너무 바쁘면 어 이거는 조금 바빠서 안될것 같아. 라고 선택할 수 있어요. And if you consider before representing a person, if you consider that um represent choosing to represent the person could like result you in like attorney discipline. Mm. So you think oh probably that client um its interest if, by representing that client um Her interest may be, you know, um, harmed by um, a, a client that you previously represented. Uh-huh. 
there might be a conflict of interest, sure. then you can you have to refuse. Oh, you so, have to refuse. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. So you def- definitely do have a choice in you the do matter. Have a choice, yes. 이 케이스를 받아야 될지 말아야 될지 mm-hmm. choice 있기 때문에. Yes. Ah, uh, yeah. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> maybe it is all on our shoulders. Well. Mm-hmm. 이제 yes. 최고의 어, 중징계라고 네. 하면 네. 연구 제명일 텐데 네. 제명된 사례가 있는지 궁금해요. 아, 네, 먼저 그 한국 변호법 변호사법상 그 징계 처분을 설명드릴 텐데 어, 먼저 다섯 크게 다섯 종류가 있습니다. 변호사법 90조에 그 연구 제명이라고 해서 permanent disbarment라고 해서 변호사 자, 자격이 아예 박탈되는 게 있고 okay. 제명이라고 해서 그냥 disbarment for like three years oh. max, I think. 그리고 3년 이하의 정직, 그래서 suspension of work. So you can't practice law for like three years or sure. less. Um, 그리고 그, 그 3, 천만 원 이하의 과태료가 있는데 그거는 그냥 monetary <웃음> penalty를 내는 거고 네. 그리고 견책이라고 해서 어, 그런... 약간 좀 라이트한 퍼니시먼트긴 한데 그 협회에서 대한 변호사 협회에서 이 사람은 이런 디스플리니 리액션을 했다라고 약간 어나운스하면서 좀안 좋은 인식을 주는 oh, okay. 약간 similar to like social stigma. Sure. So people know that you have that you did something wrong. You did something wrong. 음, 네, oh. 그렇게 다섯 가지가 있습니다. 근데 그 중에서 그 연구 제명이 가장 어, 최고의 중징계인데요. 어, 그런 사례를 제가 보았는데 2018년에 그 최초로 그 법원 부장 판사 출신인 변호사가 연구 제명을 받았는데 음흠. 어 보니까 어떤 걸 잘못했는지 보니까 그런 비리를 저질러서 그 500억 원이 예치된 통장 상고 증명을 만들어 주겠다는 약정서를 허위로 작성해 주고 수수료 명목으로 5억 원을 중간에서 가로챈 혐의로 어 대, 처음으로 대한민국에서 최, 최초로 연구 제명 징계를 받아서 어 재작년에 변호사 자격이 박탈되었다고 합니다. Okay, so that was the 네. first case 네. where the lawyer had the permanent disbarment, mm-hmm. where now he's not allowed to practice, practice law permanently. permanently. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, if you're dealing with how old she b o g i m what is that like five five hundred million or like five? Bi- I don't even know. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of money to no, be money. yeah to be involved in. Um, well, even in the, in the U.S., 미국에서 한 변호사가 최근에 네. 에, 특이한 사건으로 징계를 네. 받을지도 모른다는 케이스도 있는데요. 네. So what happened with this? There was a case in the U.S. 음. where 음. A, an attorney might face disciplinary yes, action? Yes, might face. Okay. Um, so the sanction has not been um, confirmed yet, uh-huh. but um, it's very recent. Um, so last month, tw- on, on May 27th, um, Uh, a man named um, Marta sued an airline called um, Avianca, okay. saying that he was injured when a, a cart struck his knee during a flight to Kennedy International Airport in New York. Okay. And um, the, the airline company asked the judge to dismiss the lawsuit because the statute of limitations had expired, which is like, 공소시효가 만료돼서 이제 이 케이스... 이제 끝난다라고 oh. 먼저 그 상대편에서 얘기를 했는데 um, so the man um, the plaintiff's lawyers objected and the lawyers sub- um, submitted a brief that cited like six cases um, as the reasoning mm-hmm. and the issue was that the cases were made up by ChatGPT uh-huh. and the lawyers didn't even check if they existed so the judge um was very mad at the um, lawyer for even not, not even checking, you know, the validity or, like, yes. <laughs> anything. That's right. Nowadays, AI is booming. Everything is AI. If you want to start a startup business, how do you want to start a business business? How do you want to start a business business? You want to start a business business. You want to start a business business. You want to start a business business. You want to start a 10 페이지면 다10 페이지 다 쓰면서 네. 너무 쉽게 할수 있지만 네. 단점은 이게 네. it may not be true. Exactly. It could all be lies. And for a lawyer to mm. use Chat GPT to look up, you know, previous cases mm. and all that kind of stuff, and Chat GPT did, 
give them a list, I guess, for this case. Mm. 근데, all of them were fake. All of them were fake. <laughs> Not even one case. Oh, no. And they sound very, like, persuasive. Like, the 맞아요. cases, they all sound very reasonable. Right. 읽어보면, 네. 와, 이걸 누가 썼는데, 네. 이렇게 잘 네. 썼네, 라고 할수 있지만, 네. 이렇게 팩트체킹을 한번 해보면, 네. It's not the truth. There's no mm. like case that was like this. And mm. how many cases did they look at? Half oh, a dozen. Mm, half a dozen. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how <laughs> embarrassing. Uh, embarrassing. <laughs> yes. So I guess that was mm. the main point of the of the judge. The mm. panza you mean? Yeah. I think the panza also said, mm. You didn't even double check. You didn't even double check. You didn't even double check, <laughs> you even double check your work. No more. And the lawyer practiced law for like 30 years. Oh, no. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, in any case, we'll continue yeah. on. So much more coming up on Sakon File, all the interesting cases around the world. Continuing in just a bit. Will we need lawyers at the end if ChatGPT takes over? Who knows? I think we're safe for now. But we have our one and only Pianosai here in the studio. Ho Sun Young for Sakon File. 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. We were just talking more about this AI mm-hmm. um, taking over the world, but not really taking over the legal justice system mm-hmm. as one particular lawyer decided to trust ChatGPT with his case and... Uh, was proved wrong by the judge uh, in an unfortunate and uh, embarrassing case indeed. But um, in any case, let's take a listen to our um, next piece of news. 다음으로 알아볼 주제는 뭘까요? 네, 상속에 대한 건데요. 그 요새도 핫한 그 구하라법에 대한 내용입니다. Oh, okay. 뭐 어떤 내용인지 함께 들어보시죠. <목소리> (2년여전거제아빠다에서어선을타다실종된김종환씨의친누나김종선씨는지난십사일기자회견에서양육의무를안지킨부모의재산상속을금지하는이른바구하라법을국회에서빨리통과시켜달라고호소했다김종환씨
um, a couple years ago in 2021 after encountering a storm while aboard a ship. As a result, he became entitled to compensation of approximately 300 million won, including life insurance payout of 250 million won, and then a settlement of 50 million won from the shipping company. So upon learning from this, uh, his elderly mo mother, in accordance with the inheritance provisions of the civil law, claims that she is entitled to that compensation. Now, Miss Kim, again, uh, again, the older sister, said, Our birth mother never visited us. She's never provided us a warm meal after she left us when my mother, when my younger brother was two years old. I've never even called her mom. She continued, even when her older brother passed away in 1999, the police contacted her, but she didn't come. But now our youngest brother had died and she suddenly appears because there is money involved. Now, the mother engaged in a lawsuit with Mr. Kim's surviving relatives who oppose her inheritance of Mr. Kim's assets and won the case in the first instance. Uh, and Miss Kim stated, despite the fact that my deceased brother had a common law spouse whom he lived with for six years, they were not recognized as a married couple because they did not submit the marriage document. She further on expressed, if our birth mother had not uh, known about our brother's accident, she wouldn't even have visited until she died. I wonder if she would have come if our brother only had left debt. She expressed her emotions and grievances. My goodness, this is things uh, that we uh, learn about in, you know, Hollywood stars when they die. You know, mm. the estate, the family estate um, turns into such a, a drama, such a scandal because people are just fighting over all this money. And so, you know, this totals over, you know, 600 million won, which is quite a bit of money. Mm. And so this is probably the reason why there is some some drama here. So. I guess let's take a, uh, a look at, at 상속. 이제 상속이란 일정한 친족 관계가 있는 사람 사이에서 한 사람이 사망한 후에 다른 사람에게 재산에 관한 어, 권리와 의무의 일체를 이어주거나 뭐, 뭐, 뭐 여러 가지가 있는데요. Uh, reading a, about a little bit of 상속, can you brief us on what the inheritance refers to? Uh. 그래서 상속이 그 대한민국에서는 음. 그 민법 어 천조에서 다루어지는데 어 상속이라고 하면 한 사람이 죽으면 그 사람의 그 가족 관계에 따라서 어 누구한테 얼마만큼의 재산과 빚도 그런 모든 게 음. 이렇게 나누어지는 걸 음. 이야기합니다. 그래서 그 한국에서 순위를 살펴보면 어 1순위로는 그 피상속인 이라고 해서 사망한 분의 어, 직계 비속이나 배우자한테 일 순위로 가게 되는데 여기서 그 직계 비속이라고 하면 어, 그 아래 그 children 그 자녀와 손자를 의미를 해서 그일 순위이고요. 이 네. 순위로는 어, 피상속인의 직계 존속과 배우자인데 어, 직계 존속은 반대로 그 부모와 조부모를 이야기하고 okay. 그리고 삼 순위는 그 피상속인의 형제자매이고요. 사 순위는 그 피상속인의 사촌 이내 그 반계 혈족이라고 해서 음. 삼촌 고모 이모 같은 사람들입니다. 그래서 만약에 어그일 순위가 없으면 이 순위한테 먼저 가고. 배분이 되고 일 right. 위가 없으면 삼 순위한테 가고 약간 이런 식으로 분배가 됩니다. So this is like the order of you know where the assets would go to if it's First, uh, first order is the spouse, the spouse. or the, the children. children. If they don't have a spouse or no children, then it would go to the parents. The parents, I see. And if it doesn't, then there's further orders as to who it can go to, going mm. on to cousins and okay. aunts and uncles mm. and things like that. So the unfortunate news here is that he was, I guess, married, but didn't. <laughs> Uh -huh. 사실은 이런 것도 좀 되게 난해한 게그 사실혼이 이 스파우스로 인정되는지도 되게 컨트로버셜해서 그렇죠. 네. Because what if you were just living together, um, which seems to be the case for you know nowadays, um, you know people living 동거하거나 뭐몇년 동안 몇십년 동안 동거했는데 you didn't really get married. So I guess in legal terms, that's why it's really important to have documents proving that you are. Uh, you know, a spouse mm -hmm. or, you know, having legal documentation. Mm -hmm. um, so you also mentioned the, the 구하라법. 
얘기가 나오는데요. 이게 네. 그 구하라인가 이게 어떤 네. 얘기인지 설명 네. 부탁드리겠습니다. 어, 네, 그래서 구하라가 그 카라의 구하라, 네. 그 구하라가 맞고요. 네. 그 어, 2019년 11월에 사망을 하였는데 구하라의 친오빠인 그 구호인 씨가 그 국민 청원으로 시작해서 지금 추진하고 있는 법안을 이야기합니다. 그래서 말씀 주신 것과 같이 그 양육의 의무를 저버린 부모가 사망한 자녀의 유산을 받을 수 없도록 하자는 약간 취지를 담은 법안인데요. 음. 어, 그 뉴스 말씀해 주셨듯이 그 생모가 거의 20년간 연락을 끊고 지내다가 음. 갑자기 구하라가 세상을 떠나니까 유산의 절반 이상을 요구한 것이 불합리적이라고 생각을 음. 해서 그렇게 되어 있는데 어. 그 지금 현재 그 민법에 따르면 만약에 그 친부모가 자식을 살해했거나 아니면 그 유언장을 썼는데 그걸 위조했거나 이런 경우에는 상속을 안 받아도 된다라고 해서 상속 그 결격 사유를 인정을 하고 있는데 지금 현재 법안에 따르면 그 부양 의무 태만에 대한 조항은 지금 없습니다. 그래서 그걸 추가하려고 지금 어 구하라법에서 하고 있습니다. 아, oh, 오케이. Okay. So 네. Ordinarily, because of these um, Sunni, parents are still at number two, right? Mm. And so in the case of, uh, I guess, parents killing the kids or Mm. anything like that, then Mm. obviously the parents would not get Mm. any Mm. of the assets. Mm. But if it's nothing as severe as that, are you saying that they still are part of this order that Mm. they are allowed to get the assets? So there are no exemptions Uh for um, neglect. Interesting. Uh, because that could be very subjective as well. Exactly. Like, to what extent is it neglect? Mm-hmm. And, you know, just by listening to it, you can, you can say that, yeah, obviously the mom wasn't involved in this child's life. And it, what a devastating family this is, that it seems like there's three kids, mm-hmm. two have already passed away. And there's one surviving daughter who has to take care of all of this. And she's saying the mother wasn't you know, there for anything. And mm. and what do you do? Because this mm. is such an emotional plea. Mm. And still, in this case, the mother still won half? Was that the, was that the um, case? Actually, um, um, the mother um, won four. But, um, so six to four is the ratio that oh, the I court see. finally um, ruled. 그럼 60은? 아, 6대 4인데. 네, 근데 6은 그 오빠가 가지고 4를 아버지와 어머니가 나누어 가지는 걸로 알고 있어요. Interesting. Yeah, wow. All right. Well, it does seem a little more complicated um, than what we can say. Oh, this person deserves this much and things like that. So, 이제 이런 경우가 꽤 있나 봐요. It seems like there are lots of these types of cases. 그래서 이제 구하라 씨의 생모는 그 후, 이후에 돈을 받아 갔나요? Did, did Kuhara's mother actually receive the money afterward? Yes, um, she did. Um, so um, on December 21st, um, the Gwangju Family Court made a decision um, in regard to the um, estate of Kuhara. And um, the court recognized the father's contribution to the family mm. at 20% as he did make some efforts to support his children. Mm. So um, the court ruled that the inheritance of Kuhara would be divided um, in a ratio of 6 to 4 between the brother and the parents. Instead of five to five. Okay. Yes. So is six to the brother? Yes, six is to the brother. And four is to the parents. Parents. So they would, you know, divide, divide it amongst it themselves. Amongst themselves. Yes. Wow. Mm. Okay. So based on um, Kuhara's death, there was an act to, I guess, represent more of the siblings or other people involved in um, uh, the person's life who had had passed away. Um, so without the Kuhara Act, mm. their absentee mother could gain access to mm. a lot more of the more. estate. Exactly. Yeah. Because, um, you know, according to uh, Min, Min, uh, according to the current law, Minbob Chonjo, mm-hmm. um, then the sister is Samsuni. Right, she's only in the third on, on the, the list. Third list. On and, the order. And the second being the Uh, parents. parents. Mm. Mm. Yeah, um, again, a uh, 굉장히 복잡한 케이스이긴 하지만 hopefully we'll be able to um, clarify in the near future mm. who, it, who can succeed 
um, and and I guess run run the assets. Is that a way to say it? 이제 공무원이나 군인도 일하다 이제 돌아가시는 경우들 많을 텐데 이분들은 좀 상황이 다르나요? Like for government officials or you know military personnel who pass away, I wonder if their situation would be different. 네. 어, 그 공무원들에게는 구, 구하라법이 따로 이렇게 만들어져 있는데 그래서 일반인은 구하라법에 그 보호를 못 받고 그 공무원 구하라법이라고 따로 있는데 아~ 그 공무원 재해 보상법과 공무원 연금법이라는 게 있는데 그게 그 similar like purpose가 녹아 들어간 그런 법입니다. 그래서 um, the Kuara Act for Public Officials that's mm. um, not an official name. Um, it's an amendment to the Public Officials Pension Act and the Public Officials Accident Compensation Act of Korea, which prohibits payment of inheritance money to parents who do not fulfill their parenting obligations to former public officials. 그래서 그 실제로 그 케이스가 있었는데 어, 소방관이었던 그 고강한월 씨가 업무상 스트레스로 순직한 뒤에 그그 그 자매를 키우지 않은 친모가 찾아와서 유족연금을 수령하고 실제 키운 그 실제 그 아~ 이렇게 어덥찬 어머니는 아하, 아하. 그 연금을 못 받아서 <웃음> 이게 추진되었는데 실제로 패스돼서 지금 어, 적용되고 있다고 합니다. 와우. Wow. Yeah, I mean. <웃음> Yeah. What, what can you say? You know, you just feel like justice needs to be proved here. But um, uh, what can you do in this case where, you know, a firefighter who died because of the stress, biological mother comes out of nowhere after 32 years, takes the inheritance money and runs off to who knows where. Meanwhile, the adopted mother who raised this person didn't receive any of the support that should have gone to her in the first place. Wow. Um, I mean, it, 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 it raises the question of what parents actually are. Mm, exactly. Who is a mom? What makes a mom a mom? Mm, exactly. um, and and, and it, it brings us the, the conversation of adopting as well. Mm. A lot of people want to adopt in Korea, but it's very difficult. There's a lot of stigma yes. uh, along with adopting and mm. being an adoptee as mm, well. Exactly. So. All of that kind of things has to mm. be broken down a little bit as we open up our hearts, I think, more to how we define family. It's yes. very different these days, mm. Shannon. Mm. Yeah. So um, taking a look at this particular law, is it probably 통과되기 전까지는 비슷한 얘기가 계속될 것 같은데요. 물론 어, 물려받을 돈이 많은 경우에는 해당되는 얘기이긴 하지만 반대로 물려받을 돈보다 빚, 아하, 빚이 더 많은 경우에도 <웃음> 있지 않습니까? 그러면 네. 그럴 때도 막 도망가거나 네. like a, who, What would happen in this case? You know? 부모님이 빚이 많은 경우 음. 내가 빚을 다 어, 이제 떠안으면 너무 불급풍하지 음. 않을까 싶은데요. 네. Very different when it comes to like remaining assets versus 음. debt. So That needs a fair trial as well. 이런 거는 어떻게 해결이 되나요? 어, 그래서 그 상속이라는 게 어, 그런 어, 그런 에셋도 물려받지만 그런 론 같은 라이빌리티스도 같이 채무도 같이 받는 거라서 you can't just pick and choose what <웃음> asset you want to get. 그랬으면 좋겠는데. <웃음> 네 맞아요. Asset만. 네 asset만. 빚이 말고. 네할수 있는데. <웃음> 어 그래서 그 민법에 또 상속 포기라는 게 있는데요. 이게 상속인이 그 상속 받는 사람이 상속의 효력을 소멸하게 할 목적을 의사 표시를 하는 걸 얘기를 합니다. 그래서 나는 그냥 상속 받지 않을래라고 권리를 포기를 하는 건데 이게 그 민법 1019조에 따라서 모든 상속인이 동일하게 그 3개월 이내에 그 마, 나는 상속을 받지 않을 거야라는 그런 폼을 작성해서 내면 포기가 됩니다. Within three months of the death of the date 어, of, of 그게 death? 그거를 알고 나서 그 oh. 죽고 나서 내가 상속을 받을 수 있다는 걸 알고 3 개월이었던 okay. 걸 기억합니다. 네. Okay. 네 상속 개시 있음을 안 날로부터 네3 개월입니다. Interesting. 네. Okay, so um, within three months you can choose if you want to inherit. Inherit. The it entirety will be the, of the estate. estate. Right. Estate. So be. Mm-hmm. Um, might be plus or minus. Or minus. <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> 알수 있나요? Oh, you can assume from can assume. the living standards. 그럼 and... 디테일 같은 거를 못 네. 보고 결정을 해야 되나요? 아마도 그런 거 같아요. 그래요? 네, 그 너무 다음에... 리스크가 크지 않나요? 네, 그런 거 같습니다. But, but don't, 네. don't you think I have a right to know whether I want the everything or not? 음. 아닌가? 
But then, um, if you choose to, um, you know, forfeit your right to mm. um, take over, take over, then um, the next lineal descendant, so it goes to another beneficiary. Ah. So that beneficiary has to, you know, say I waive my right. I've. 그러면 또그 순위로 네, 내려가는 내려가요. 거예요. 네, 그래서 아. 만약에 모르고 있었다면, 그래서 부모가 만약에 그 하, 어, 부모 조부모 그러니까 부, 음. 그 parents, uh, grandparents의 그 빚을 받지 않겠다 포기를 하면 그게 자식한테 간다고 합니다. 그래서 아. 자식이 하지 않으면 또. 자식한테 빚이 그냥 가는 남아 있는 거예요. 남아 있다고 합니다. 와우. 네. 아, 네. 근데 최근 판례에서 실제로 그 어머니 아버지가 그 할아버지 할머니 빚에 대한 상속을 포기하면 손자녀 역시 빚을 갚을 책임이 없다는 판결이 최근에 나왔다고 합니다. Yeah, because that's 네. that's also a bit unfair as 음, well. Exactly. I mean, it's my grandparents' debt that I have to. <웃음> 어, 너무 불공평. <웃음> 네. I mean, who? I mean, who wanted to be born in that type of circumstance? Exactly. Yeah, that's that's something to be talked about 음. as well. Do you think that comes from like? Years and years of you know our our ancestral cultures as well. Yeah, yeah it seems yeah. like it's a definitely a cultural thing of how mm. we deal with yeah. assets and how we deal with you know mm. our parents and their parents mm. and things like that. Yeah. Since we talk a lot about like hyodo and, and filial yeah. piety yeah. In, in Confucian culture, yeah. so Lovely. yeah, it's interesting how certain religions can can pass down. Um, a, a different culture in the mm. legal system as well. Mm. But so what about the U.S.? 미국에서도 마찬가지인가요? 네, 미국에서도 제가 봤는데 it's very similar. So okay. you can choose to disclaim an inheritance and it's similar that you have to write a, fill in a form um, and submit it to like the department head or you know, head okay. of governmental agency. Somebody. Uh, somebody. <laughs> and then and then then it will pass on to the next beneficiary. I see. Mm. Well, it's quite unfortunate when someone passes away um, from an accident because mm. it's just out of nowhere. Mm. But people also make preparations mm. in advance um, just in case they die of natural causes or accidents. Mm. But in such cases, they may have a will mm. in advance. 유언장이라고 하죠. 미리 써놓는 그런 경우가 있는데 are there specific like formats? Yes. Okay. In Korea, the format is very strict. Okay. So it has to be in your own handwriting. Uh-huh. So it's in, in the U.S. it's called holographic will. Okay. So they don't, the, in Korea, um, they don't recognize any like electro, computer. A computer document to 작성한 문서는 okay, recognize. Oh, 인정을 못 받아요. 네, 인정을 못 받는다고 합니다. 그래서 되게 까다로운데 어, 누가 대신 써줘도 안 되고 컴퓨터로 음. 쓰는 것도 안 되고 음. 어, 그게 만약에 어, 핸드리튼으로 핸 라이팅으로 했는데 뒤에 일렉트로닉 뭐 테이블 같은 표 같은 걸 붙여도 그거는 인발리드하다고 합니다. 그러니까 모든 게 핸드리튼 폼에 되어야 된다고 하고요. 네, 그래서 되게 어, 까다롭네요. 까다롭다고 합니다. <웃음> 네, 근데 um, whereas in the US, um, there are requirements to make a valid will, but they are um, relatively more lenient okay. than those in Korea. Uh-huh. And I looked at those requirements and you have to be of a certain age which is 18 years old oh, okay and you must be of sound mind and memory sure so you're not like hallucinated 맞아요. you don't suffer from a mental disorder sure and you have to make your will um freely and voluntarily so there has to be no duress or any improper pressure sure and your will ha- must be in writing but it can be in an electronic form. Oh, okay. And 영화에 많이 본것 같아요. 네, 맞아요. Yeah. 맞아요. <laughs> See a lot of like, yeah. like crimes and like, oh, mm. I, I know I, I'm safe. I'm not, you know, delusional. Delusional. Mm. 그런 맞아요. 얘기도 많이 해야 되고. 맞아요. Yeah. And then um, there must be two, um, two people who witness that you're, oh. as you're writing it, as you're signing the will. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah. And they have to be disinterested, which means they are not entitled to receive any, you know, estate from the will. So right. you don't get any benefit. Right. You're just disinterested. Right. Mm. Makes mm. sense. Mm. I mean, you do need witnesses to get married. You need, need witnesses to, I guess, write a will that, mm-hmm. you know, shows who's going to be responsible for your assets or your debts. So hopefully you can 
work with trustable people. But in any case, learned a lot today. 오늘 덕분에 너무 많은 것을 배워봤는데요. 어 변호사님 아쉽게도 오늘 마지막이게 됩니다. 네 맞습니다. Oh, so sad. We wanted to do something a little more different and uh, try something new and learn a lot. But maybe next time, um, when you're uh, a little less busy as well, and yes, call me whenever. Yeah, I'd love to have you. 덕분에 너무 즐거웠고 너무 많은 것을 배웠습니다. 저도 즐거웠습니다. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll see each other soon. And we'll have to leave you on that note. Once again, thank you to all of our lawyers who joined us on s a k o n File. We wish you the best and hope you become the best of the best lawyers in the business. <laughs> in any case, we'll leave you guys with our last song. Here is Charlie Puth, We Don't Talk Anymore. 여러분, 내일 봬요.